What happens if you, you know, refrigerate the buttercream and it does get hard? Uh, so you need to save it. You need to use it tomorrow or something. You can reconstitute it. Uh, when the buttercream is, is frozen or refrigerated, it'll be rock hard. And you need to figure out a way how to get it soft and you use it. All you have to do is you take, you can, you can melt up to about 20 to 25 percent of it. So you put it in a bowl like this, put it over the stove, gently heat it until about 20 percent or so melts, then put it on the mixer, whip it up to full volume again. It'll be just fine. Um, if you put it on the cake first, like I've done before, I've made a cake, already got the cake done, and then what I do is I refrigerate the cake, all the buttercream will be rock hard. Well, let it sit out for half an hour before you serve it. That way the buttercream starts to soften up a little and it's not quite as hard. I mean, after all, eating hard buttercream is like eating a stick of butter, you know? It's not as dense as a stick of butter, but it just feels that way in the mouth. Now, let's say you're not satisfied with plain old buttercream. You need something more. There's nothing wrong with adding chocolate. But we don't want the chocolate to be so hot that it's going to cause the, the, the butter to melt. So which means the butter and, the, and the, the butter and the chocolate need to be about the same temperature. If the butter is, is uh, below 88 degrees Fahrenheit and your chocolate is roughly around the same temperature, it should not marry together very nicely. However, we know from working with chocolate in the past that if we get the chocolate above 91 degrees, or above 88 in this case, it will start to melt the butter. So we have to be careful when we mix it in. Which means I can't just wait until, I can't just pour it in there. Otherwise I could run the risk of melting that, uh, that butter in there. I think that's two. Does that two down there? No, it's two. It's two. Mm -hmm. that, that's two, two that's one, three. three. This is three. Yeah, I'm going to do it kind of at a slower speed. All I'm going to do is just mix it in. I'm just going to go ahead and let it pour in very gently. I like to go way up here and do it in a thin stream. Let the, let the whisk catch it. And when it does that, it brings it into uh, the buttercream slowly. So how many ounces of What was this, about four ounces of chocolate? Right? It doesn't need to be a lot. Of the idea is that it gives you flavor and color without being so overpowered. Um, you can put more in if you want. For like more chocolate, more chocolate cake, and this more is chocolate. This yeah. is a dark bitter sweet chocolate. Mm -hmm. All of this is good. I'm going to go ahead and scrape down a little bit because I've got a lot of it on the sides. No. But what this will do is have a gentle flavor of chocolate. And of course you could add more, you know, if you really want to. You just don't want to distract uh, yourself from the buttercream, and you also don't want the buttercream to be affected in the way of texture, so you can still work with it. Let's scrape this all down, make sure all the ingredients are in there. I'm going to bring it up to speed three again. I'm just going to whip it so it really gets well incorporated. Now, right now it's a light color. You know, it's not really dark. If you wanted to make it dark, of course you could, but it's just, I don't think it's necessary. Uh, the, the, the cake already has that dark color, and uh, if you really want it to be dark, you could add other things to it. You could add cocoa to it if you want to really bring the color down. But cocoa has a granular feel to it, too. It's not absolutely smooth. Well, let's try that. Grab your spoon.